this is a story called uh, Up For The Match. And uh, the, the two main characters in it are We Root and The Cube. And you, you may actually know characters like this from your own life. In fact, you might be one of these characters. So I'll just read a short extract. They're, they're, in, they're in the pub and uh, the cube says to We Root, what do you have on We Root? Do you want to paint? Indeed and I will, said We Root. Billy the barman wiped the top of the bar counter and waited for the cube to give him his orders. One time he had made the mistake of anticipating the cube's requirements. His offering of two pints of Guinness had been summarily dismissed with great scorn by the cube. It's nice to be asked, the cube had said, or to wait to be asked. Who ordered these pints, my good man? That's what you always drink, said Billy. The cube stared at him for a long moment. You should never anticipate the customer's orders or wishes. I mean, if this was a barber's, you wouldn't just hack away at the customer's hair. Or if this was a restaurant, you wouldn't just serve up the meal. No, my good man, you would wait to see just what nature of her cut was required or what the customer wanted to eat. In a good restaurant, you might even give the customer a menu. You might explain the culinary options or the specials, if there were specials. But not here. Here you don't give the customer any option whatsoever. Here, he declared, warming to his theme, here you don't even give the customer his, or indeed her, own place. In this pub, the customer gets no respect. What do you mean, we rude interrupted him, what do you mean, her place? Who's her? Who's, who's she? They were leaning against the bar. We root was on the high stool. He'd been there most of the afternoon. Why are you staring at me like that? Billy the barman had challenged the cube. I'm trying to get it through to you that you have to treat the customers with respect. So you don't want these pints? I never said that. I said you should not anticipate the customer's wishes. So after that, Billy the barman always waited until he had very precise instructions on how to proceed. Billy was like that, contrary. But then Sullivan's public house was like that as well. Its clientele seemed to like it that way, although they would never admit it, especially we Root and the Cube. Two pints of Guinness, please, Billy. Coming up, said Billy the barman. I'm just picking this at uh, random. It's a different type of story. It's called Monica. And uh, there are different twists and turns uh, in it. But uh, this, this will just give you a wee, a wee taste. And this particular scene happens after the club that Jimmy, one of the main characters, was a member of, and, and they had just won a very important hurling game. And they were having a celebration in the pub. And Monica, who wasn't Irish, was with him. Finally, it was Jimmy's turn to sing. Monica was nervous for him. She'd never heard him sing before. She didn't know if he could. He began low, quietly. The so song she learned later was Miguel Amar. His voice rose to its intense moments, then dropped back. His eyes were closed. There was such longing and melancholy and pride and ancientness in it. Tears came into her eyes. She couldn't believe that the shy, awkward man she'd been sitting with in pubs could make such a wondrous thing. This is when she fell in love with him. After they cleared the floor for the set dancers, Jimmy's sister coached Monica through the steps. It, 
was exuberant. It was joyous. Monica felt happy in a way she didn't remember. Since childhood, she was the outsider by nation, by race, but none of them made her feel that way. The music pulled them all together. They were uplifted, united and excited by its power. Before that, he'd been wondering how long it would take her to get fed up with him. He thought it was inevitable. All his experience led him to believe that this was so, but she didn't. Each became a major focus for the other. When they couldn't meet, they would pass two hours or more on the phone talking late into the night. The word love, approached tentatively at first, began to appear in their conversation. The first night they slept together, she told him she had learned the word Anamkara. She thought it was a beautiful word. Do you know what it means? He asked her. Anam is soul and Kara means friend. Well done, he said. Anamkara, she whispered into his ear. Forever. Forever, he said. And he meant it. Shanae.